adaptability uh, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and of the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So, uh, Zion is the Greek word for living. It means to be alive, to breathe. It's a living thing. When you when you talk about living things, it, it means that it's adaptable. And I believe it's adaptable, as I said before, it's adaptable to um, the current knowledge of us human beings. I believe the word was given to us. So as we progress as a species and our knowledge and understanding is working in the universe, we would be able to ultimately integrate that into our understanding of the Bible because the Bible was you know, given to us to a certain degree from God himself and, you know, through the, uh, through the writings of the prophets. And, and if that's true and, and it's alive and it's adaptable, then it should be able to integrate um, current findings, you know, uh, from, from science, from the field, in the various different fields of science into, um, into the uh, word. And, and I'll go into that as we go on through the series. I'll be integrating a lot of different uh, theories and, and archaeological finds, geological finds, things of that nature into uh, into the Bible itself, even with that of Exodus and, and earlier dating than, than what we have so far. And, and so um, we should be able to constantly adapt. And we're, we're adaptable, adaptable creatures as well, especially if you look at it from an evolutionary perspective. Um, and not just evolution, but even psychologically on the developmental stages from childhood to adulthood. You look at how we develop and stuff. We're very highly adaptable creatures and we adapt to new material. We should. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're uh, in complete denial, which we'll get into here shortly, of new information. People can close themselves off so much that they never grow, never transform, never do anything. And they stay within this consistent loop you know, positive feedback loop where they, you know, um, stay within their confines and they never branch out uh, beyond that because it, it'll interrupt their current knowledge structure. And that's painful. But anything that's worth having is painful. I mean, if you exercise, it's painful, but you're getting benefit from it and it's transforming you literally, physically. And so you can decide most people don't want to do that anymore. We just want to sit around and do absolutely nothing. I understand because I do it too, especially after kids and work and everything, school and everything else. You're like, okay, maybe I do just want to sit here just for a second and relax. And as soon as you sit down, one of the kids hits somebody or something happens or screaming in the house and, you know, quote unquote, all hell breaks loose in the house and you're trying to contain it once more and you think you can rest again. You might as well not. You might as well just stand there and, and, sip on another cup of coffee at eight o'clock in the evening because you know you're going to have more trouble ahead of you so <laughs> uh but anyway so uh philippians chapter four uh, verses eight through nine finally brethren whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy meditate on these things these things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me these do and the God of peace will be with you. Meditate on these things. Study these things. Try to understand these things. But yet, the interesting part on that is the word true up there in Allah, uh, Allah, uh, face, I think is how I'm, I think I'm pronouncing it right, which literally means true, factual. So you want to meditate on whatever things are factual. Look at these things. Try to make sense of them. See how it works and meditate is something much deeper than just learning the material. That's just comprehension. It's also being able to see how that material fits into your own current knowledge structure, your own interpretation of reality as such. And reality encompassing the Bible and your beliefs, everything, and trying to make sense of that. And um, uh, you, you can... Oftentimes people can comprehend and memorize facts, but to actually integrate that into your knowledge structure is a very difficult process. You, it takes a lot of work and it's transferring from the right hemisphere. That's where the information comes in through the right hemisphere to the left, back over to the right. And that's the way it should do. So you're constantly trying to formulate and you're wrestling with these ideas, this new knowledge that you just incorporated, that you just re retrieved. 